Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you are here to learn about trading futures markets using the Viper indicators and tools, you are absolutely in the right place. Uh, tonight's webinar is about seeing trades in real time. This is Thursday, July 18th, 2019. Beautiful day here in the Bay Area. First, we've got to knock our standard disclaimer out of the way and get over to some charts. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational pur purposes only. Oh, excuse me. Oh, lordy lord, help me. Sorry about that. Let me start that over. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar, other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And of course, everybody does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right. Now, um, I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight than what I normally do. Uh, what I'm going to do is this, is how many of you uh, trade futures right now? And if you do, show of hands, what instruments do you like to trade? Do you like, let me get over to a chart and show some instruments to jog your thinking process. Stand by. Screen one, gold chart. Got crude, just rolled crude to September today. You got uh, E mini S and P, yes, uh, E mini S and P, gold. Got the gold chart here. These are the micros: micro Russell, micro ES, micro gold, micro Nasdaq, micro YM, tenth of the normal E mini size contract. Uh, we have Spazzy Nazzy NQ. Used to trade that in the room. We banned it for spasinous reasons. Of course, we've got the Russell. That's in the live room, too. And uh, some traders uh, with us trade YM. That's the mini E-mini Dow futures. In fact, I, I think Gary's replaced the ES chart with YM temporarily this week. Quite a few crude traders, crude and Russell, Russell and crude. A lot of crude and Russell. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's, let's flip the gold to crude since there's so many crude traders in here. Let's start with crudy crude. Here again, we just, uh, does everybody know how to roll contracts in Ninja? Anybody not know how to roll contracts in Ninja? Your instrument manager, select the instrument, pick the current front month. Everybody know how to do that? Anybody not know how to do it? I can take a second to show it. Does everybody know how you figure out what the current front month is? Everybody know about cmegroup.com site? Oh, we do have gold traders in here. Paul trades gold. Crudy, crude, crude. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here is the CME group site. Now, normally this would always show the current front month, but occasionally it'll be a day or two behind. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Uh, CMEgroup.com. Go about halfway down the page, and here's all your products right here. Energy, here's crude. It's still showing August. But you can see this. Um, uh, two things when you do the roll. Uh, click on the instrument itself, and you will notice that uh, – give it a second to update here. See how all a lot of the – most of the – uh, volume has shifted from August to September. See that? If you look during the day, this would probably be three times as much as the August contract. So you can make sure you want to flip that tonight uh, so you're out of it. The other thing you can do here is um, is you go into the instrument panel. Okay. Everybody knows. Okay, so the CME group site, instrument panel, roll it forward. Now here's crude. 
All right, let's orient ourselves to what we're looking at here. Let's go back and look at today. Today was the 18th, Thursday. What you're looking at here is we're connected to a data feed for crude oil, CL futures, September contract. I'm going to turn the predictor, predictors off temporarily. Uh, midnight Pacific coming into today was located right here. I am in California. This is Pacific time. Uh, if you had a crude chart up yourself and you're looking at it, you would orient it towards your time frame. East Coast, of course, add three hours. But your data would be the same as mine because you're connected to the same data source. Um, our indicators are the background colors and bar colors, respectively. Green, uh, uh, transitional, and red. Red is generally a downtrend. Green is usually an uptrend. Transitional is just what it says. It's transitioning. A lot of times when you are um, in a choppy market, it can be going sideways. It can be going sideways to down. It can go sideways to up. The most prominent feature you will notice is the fact that the uh, background is takes on sort of a striped shirt appearance like this. Red transition, green transition, et cetera, et cetera, all the way across. When you go into a protracted trend move, as you did here on the right, you'll see predominant colors of red in a downtrend like this. And most of the bars will be red, and the uh, mid band and all the bands will stair step down like this. Okay, we'll talk about how to trade that in just a minute. Um, so knowing what kind of trend you're in is, is incredibly important, uh, or whether you are range bound to drive your thinking as far as what kind of trades to take. So for instance, here today, you know, you probably start looking at your chart around 5.50, 6 a.m. Pacific, and that would have been somewhere about, about right in there. That's when the live room was opened by Gary. Somewhere right about, uh, well, more or less in here. Let's blow this chart up a little bit so you can see it. Now, the one thing we got to be aware of is, and this happens a lot on crude, gold, and the equities, particularly around the crude uh, uh, pit uh, open at 6 a.m. Pacific, is sometimes you'll have trends. You could make the case that going into 6 a.m., when the room opened and some of you were in there looking at this chart, with, you know, at the, here's midnight Pacific. So this would have been the European trading session for crude, like that. That for some period of time here, you were sideways to up, right? Sideways to up. However, right before the crude pit opened at six, you went into sort of a, a little bit of a transitional uh period that looks something like that. Now, when you see these occur in real time, what we need to do, and I'm sure Gary did this, um, is identify some support and resistance areas by drawing lines on the charts. And in this case, uh, I wasn't there at 6 or 5.55, but I would bet that there were some lines on the chart, and maybe you guys you guys and gals who were in there can back me up on this. He probably had a line, well, I'm guessing up here around resistance, right? Probably had another line somewhere in this area right here. And I would guess there was another line probably in this area right here. Does that look right for those of you who are in the room looking at crude and trading crude? Anybody remember this? Can confirm or I cannot confirm or deny that was the lines that I saw. <laughs> Does that look right? Crude oil chart early today, this morning. Room opening, crude pit, uh, uh, crude opening at six. That's the lines that you had on your chart, Brian. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, that would make sense. And so let's go back before we um, proceed. Let's look at why we did this. Okay, that, that's probably a good place to start. And this is probably also a continuation a little bit of what Gary taught on Monday night, which is preparing your charts to trade for the morning session. 
So all you're really doing here, and this is just a simple little thing that hardly takes any time at all, but is incredibly valuable to your trading decisions as far as whether you're going to go long or short and where you find support and resistance, is all you have to do is just go in here and look at where these swings are. You can see right in here there's one around 57 and change. So you had a little shelf and then it broke up and then it pulled back and held it. And all you do is just take your horizontal line, you have to go ahead and throw a line in there. Okay, and then in the, in the pre-market session here, there's a little shelf kind of forming right in this 30, 32 area. You just throw a line right in there, right? And then you can clearly see that in the European session, when she peaked, she got up here to around 44, okay? Now, the way we look at this, here's the way we look at this, okay? Let's pretend, let's pretend we don't know what's going to happen. So there are cases where a market can remain within a... 30 tick range like such for some period of time before it decides to break up or down. Now this would be a case going forward where you would remain range bound inside of here. Now coming out of here when you're anticipating what's going to happen, let's say hypothetically tomorrow morning you, you get up and the chart looks very similar to this. So here's how we might interpret this. We know that if she stays inside of this range, we are range bound, and we can decide whether we want to buy or sell that inside the range. Looks to be about 30 ticks, so that is tradable, right? If the market decides to continue up, would you not agree that you would get a breakup out of here that would look something like this? This would uh, continue the uptrend, and we would be looking to buy uh pullbacks into support as it continued to ratchet in an upward manner yes this is where we're going coming into six o'clock on crude where we're sort of thinking ahead a little bit we're sort of looking beyond the right we're looking what happened here that's what the support and resistance lines are for right and we're thinking forward we're looking we're saying anticipating a little bit okay now it now if, if she breaks down out of here you know, and takes that support out and starts ratcheting in a downward manner, going into a downtrending type market, we will look to short that as long as, in, as, long as it is uh, uh, continues in a downtrend. Now, does everybody understand the concept of what we're doing there? Does everybody understand what we're doing there? It's very simple but powerful. You're putting lines at support and resistance and acknowledging the fact that if she breaks up, now you're going to go resume the uptrend, right? And if she breaks down, we're going to go into a downtrend and we trade it on retracements to resistance. All right, let's fast forward and see what happened. Most of you remember what happened, but now we're going to go forward and actually watch what happened. Now, it is possible... And I don't know if Gary did this in the room. Like I said, I was not there. And this might have happened before the room opened. There could have been a, a region box using Object Trader placed here, with allowing it to trade long or short. She beat you come in late. It's okay. Here, I'll just recap that in two seconds, and it'll make total sense to you. And by the way, those of you I see quite a few coming in late, don't worry about it. This whole thing is recorded, and everybody's going to get a copy. You can watch it as many times as you want, okay? But I'll go back and repeat that for just a second, okay? All right? So when we come in and we have a market that looks like this, this could be tomorrow morning a gold chart looks like this. You could be looking at ES and it looks like this. Any market that looks like this, we put support and resistance lines in, like such. We realized that in the European session, it was a little bit of an uptrend coming off of here, which was an uptrend, 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 and now we're consolidating. It's quite possible that the market could break up and we're looking to get long up here, right? We have a box forming at the mid band that looks like this that could actually go either way at the crude pit open, right? And then if she breaks support, we could very well be going into a downtrend that we trade through through a series of retracements, kiss and roll off of resistance, taking shorts in the downtrend. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, good. Uh, and here, obviously, you can see that the resolution out of the consolidation area into the pit open was, was down. Now, 
Is it possible that you could have had a box here and been already short when it broke? Yes. Is it possible that you could have put a bo range box here, here, or here and shorted the break of that when it broke? Yes. If you missed it, what should you do? In other words, if you did not have a box here and caught the short when it broke mid-band, if you did not have a box here and you caught the short when it broke here, and you did not have a box here, unfortunately, and you didn't get filled short when it broke support, you just did not not do that, what must we do when this breaks and starts to run away from us to the downside? We have to do what? Do we hit a market order and jump in and try to ride it? Do we just go, go in here, you know, and pull up Object Trader, pull up whatever, and just hit market order? Look, it's running. It's tanking. We're going to miss the whole thing. We better get in. Holy cow. Is that how we trade? Are we chasers? Do we chase trades? Are we breakout traders? Is that what we do? Anybody? What's your vote? What must you do? That's not a rhetorical question. I only see like one or two people answering, and there's a ton of people in here. That's an actual question. What are you going to do tomorrow morning if this happens to you? Tomorrow morning, crew does the exact same thing. What are you going to do? I'll give you five seconds to re think and respond. Real time tomorrow, your crew chart looks just like this, and you didn't draw the box. And it's running away from you like a big dog. You have to wait for a, and it starts with an R, retracement, pullback. You can say pullback, P, starts with a P. Pullback, retracement, same thing. All right, now I'm going to recreate 6 a.m., 6.02, I believe this is, in real time as it happened this morning. And when you think you see a short trade entry, you go ahead and type in the letter S. Okay? Almost every one of you typed in, I have to wait for a retracement. I have to wait for a pullback. I have to be patient. I have to wait. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, that is correct. Okay? All right, so here we go. We could um, start right here. 602. I'm going to advance the chart. And we're going to recreate real time that happened this morning. And when you think you see a short trade, you type in the letter S. Here we go. There's 605. 606. 607. 608. 609, 610, 612, 614, 14 minutes into the crude pit open on oil. Remember, remember we didn't get this. We missed it. So everybody in here said in order to get short, we're in a downtrend, so we're shorting, right, that we need a retracement. I'm just going to pause here at 6.14 a.m. Pacific, re recreating this morning on crude. Do you have a retracement yet? Yes or no? Has it retraced sufficiently to allow you to take a short yet, yes or no? It's a simple question. you got four seconds. Three, two, one. Time's up. No. So what we want to do... And this is a really good practice thing for everybody that really wants to learn how to do this. If you're serious about trading futures and you say, you know what, Charles, Gary, I really want to learn futures. I know I can make money doing this. This doesn't seem too complicated. I think I can do it. I don't need to make a ton of money each day. You know what? If I just make a couple hundred bucks, I'll be happy. If that's you, then I'll show you a simple little thing you can do. You collectively, everybody in here tonight and listening on this recording. You simply scroll back and forth. You don't need a fancy replay. You create what happened, just like that. That's all you have to do. See how you go back and you put your lines, right? Put your lines, just like I did. Reconstruct the time. You see it break. You missed it. Pretend you missed it, right? You're seeing it break. All you're doing is watch it go back and forth. Has it retraced? No. You know that, right? You see it. 
I'm doing it with you back and forth, just like that. It's that simple. You know, training your mind to see that over and over again is just so powerful. It's just so good. I'm telling you. All right, let's continue on. Everybody, there's only one person who typed in an S. Now we see that there is no S yet. I just wanted to pause and make that crystal clear at this point. You are dropping like a stone, and there is no retracement, and there is no S. There's only one person that typed in an S, and we all can see that that was not correct. I'm not calling you out. I'm just telling you straight up, it hasn't retraced, right? All right, here we go. Continuing on. When you see the short, you type in the letter S. Here we go. Now we're at 621. 21, in, uh, 21 minutes into the crude pit open. Pacific time, 628, almost at 630. Time for the uh, U.S. equity session to begin. 629. 630. 631, 634, 635 a.m. Pacific time. Market's moving pretty quickly now. Bars are forming, 640, 644, looking for a short. Kiss and roll off resistance is how we take shorts, right? A retracement into resistance is how we take the shorts. Here we go, continuing on. There's 650, 652, 653, and down we go. All right, let me be clear about something. So there's no ambiguity about what we are doing here. And this is going to be probably some of the best I've advice I can give you tonight. All right, so so if you, if you weren't you're not really sort of paying attention and you're watching TV and playing with your dog and pouring a Coke, this is the time where you put that down and kind of try to watch what I'm saying here. Can you see that as this uh, crude market ratcheted down, it stayed below uh, uh, what's called this stealth line, which is a red I call it kind of sneaky snake looking line. See how it's a red line that follows the market price action? And it doesn't close above it until right here. Can everybody say can everybody see that? Second of all, in a downtrend, you have one, two, three, four bars, four, four bands below the mid band, the thick line in the middle, of course, everybody knows is the mid band, right? And then, of course, we have four bands above it, one, two, three, four, or, uh, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Those become more prominent in our thinking as we deal with an uptrend, but we're looking at the downtrend, right? As long as this market remains in a downward fashion and it eventually finds support right around the 60 level right here, do we really care about entering a trade just yet? Yes or no? As long as it's doing this, can we take a trade? Yes or no? As long as it's doing that right there. No. We just discussed that. This is the thrust part of the move. The background is red. Mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping down. We know very clearly we're in a downtrend, and we are looking for retracements into resistance. Now, the three areas that we're going to look when the market starts to pull back to get in are going to be on the short side where? Here, right? Here, and where else could it go? Right, up into here. In order of... Um, Retracement consideration on the short side to enter the trade. This this area, this little box, is considered what we call minimum criteria. In the fact that it has come off its lo lowest swing here and closed above the stealth line, the red sneaky snake line, right? And it's closed above line two. So it has entered the minimum criteria shorting zone. Now, when you are in a downtrend and you want to activate real-time alerts indicator, you would turn on the following. You would turn on uh, mid-band short enabled, minimum criteria short enabled, and phantom short trade enabled. 
Now, can everybody see, I intentionally did not turn that on for the purpose of this exercise, because uh, the alerts are built to help you see it and actually flash and flag you when it's happening in real time, which is incredibly good for your trade entries, right? It reinforces what you should be visually seeing anyway, right? However, when it comes into these areas, our spidey sense perks up, and we say to ourselves, hey, 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 ho, 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 we, these bars, wait a minute, these bars are coming right on a mid-band here. That's a trade. That's a trade right there. Many of you, like I said, there was a few of you that typed in S's when the when market was done here. We all see that was not correct. You're still thrusting. Some of you typed in S's when the bars got to here, and that was correct. That is minimum criteria entry. Yes, can you see the bars flashing? See it as it enters this area? Many of you, I wouldn't say all of you, but most of you typed in S's for short trade entry when the bars got here to the mid-band area, and that is a mid-band short. Does everybody see that? Now, how this played out, is you got short, you never got short out of this box, it never closed below it, so this never turned in anything. It's a legitimate trade entry, but it was never, it never closed, so you never got in there, okay? You did get filled here, all right? Now, whether you got a scalp off or not, and you stopped out, it's hard to say. This might have turned into a, a wash trade, or if your, if your initial stop was higher, like at line six, this could have been one continuous trade. Regardless of whether you got in or out, or you were still in it, there was another trade that set up here on the deep retracement or phantom right here, short. This trade worked out quite nicely. Closed outside of it, you're short on that bar right there, and down she goes. How many of you got that? Anybody? Any gold stars go out today? How many of you got that? How many of you saw it and, pat saw it and patiently waited for it to set up? Show of hands. Aaron, you got it? Michael, you got it? Keep the saddle on the horse. Brian, Mindy, quite a few, you got it. Good. You want to do another one? Let's do one more. Tell you what, we'll do one more, and then we'll look at the other side. We'll look at the long side. Okay, you ready? We're going to stick with crude for the next uh, step of this exercise. Hold on for one second, please. I'm going to try to make this one a little harder. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick this exercise up a notch, and I'm going to step through 6.50 a.m. Pacific all the way over till after 8 o'clock. And I'm looking at the chart. It's paused now. You don't see it, but I do. And I see a number of short entries. I'm not going to tell you how many. But I'm just going to say there's more than one. Let me just put it this way. Now, as I advance this chart and you believe that you see short trade entries occur, reconstructing real time, you type in the letter S. Are you ready? And then I'm going to circle, circle back and talk about the trades. Here we go. You're typing in S's as you see shorts, and there's going to be more than one, so prepare yourself. Here we go. Okay, you're right at 7 o'clock. 7.03. I'm leaving the alerts on to help you. Because, you know, you could have your alerts on to alert you, so it's only fair that you get to see them. Okay. All right, here we go. Let me blow this up. It's getting really small bars right now. Remember, you're typing in S's when you believe that you see short trade entries. You are now at 7.06, a little over an hour into the crude pit session. Seven oh seven. Seven ten. So I'm going pretty fast here, because the distance between here and here I showed in about third, 10 to 20 seconds, and this was actually about 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going pretty fast. The bars, won't, the bars won't be going near this fast when you watch it in real time. But it's good to learn. It's good to learn this way. Okay. All right, 
714, 721, 725, 726, we're still in the live room, live room still open, 736, 737, 739, 740, 741. Stand by. I thought that was off. My apologies. Uh, phone ringing. Hold on one second, please. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, oh yeah, okay, we're continuing on. Okay, so let me go back. All right, so this was this was uh, 739, 740, 741, 742. Okay, our CS is coming in. Good, good. 743. I'm gonna go to eight o'clock. 747, 752, and there's eight o'clock. Just go ahead and round this out. Take it to 8.30. They just hammered crude today, didn't they? They just hammered crude. Hammered it. I think it was a 200 tick drop overall. It was just unbelievable. Well, let's go back. First of all, I want to ask a question before we continue on. What is your goal when you come into a, a trading session like a morning, say, today or even tomorrow morning is what is what is the purpose of trading other than making money? Is it to take as many trades as you can each day, to go into as many markets as possible, catch every trade that comes along and try to just capitalize on, you know, maximizing your gains and what have you? Is that what you're they're doing there for? Is that what you do? Is that what we're trying to do? What are we trying to do? We've got to have a purpose of why we're doing this. I mean, it is fun. I mean, I like getting up and doing it. You know, I know Gary likes getting up and doing it. And we got tons of members all over the world for the past 10 years to do it with us. And a lot of you in here do it with us. One and done. Dennis says, my goal is to make 1,000 each morning. My goal is not to jump into trades. Aaron says, I want to be right, and I get one or two trades, and I want to be done, and I want to be out. Find the safest trade and just take it. Hit your goal, says Weldon. Good. So let's look at this. Let's assume, let's go back before we go and look at how many uh, shorts set up. Most of you got that right, so that's good. Is Let's take a look at this trade alone right here. And let's say you didn't get filled short till somewhere way down here. Let's use a round number so it's easy. 56.80. Okay, got filled 60, 56.80 short, you know, on the close of this bar as it came through the mid-band. Say, say so, something like that. Okay? And it dropped all the way down here. And I don't know, let's say you stopped out. You trailed your stop with the stealth in line two, and we called it, and you got out at, I don't know, what is this? Uh, I don't know, 90. 55.90. What is the distance in ticks between here and here, approximately? 55.90 to 56.80. Here to here. Right, 90 ticks. 90 ticks on this one short. So you didn't get this one. You know, you, when you, you tried to box this and whatever, it didn't fill, and, you, you know, finally you got in here, you boxed it, whatever, and then maybe you didn't do it right or something. You put a limit order, you hit a market, whatever. You're short right in here. And you trail, trail, trail. You got one lot on, maybe two, maybe one lot you take off at 10 ticks. You lock that down, and you trail it on the other one. You know, let's say you did that, hypothetically. You get two lot on there, one you pull off at 10. You know, ticks that would have been probably somewhere in here, and then you get a one runner that goes all the way 90 ticks. How much money did you make on this trade? 
So you had one lot that got 10 ticks on a scalp. Yes? And your second lot, you caught the runner, which gave you 90 ticks. Hey, many Christmas. So the total for your whole trade was 100 ticks even. Oops, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, 100 ticks even total for both scalp and the runner, which equals. So if I go back 100 ticks times what? How much is this worth? How much is crude oil worth per tick? I'm going to put a blank here per tick. Equals what? How much money did you make if you scalp one out at 10 and caught a runner for 90? You crude traders, you should know that one, huh? right? What's your, what's your crudy worth? What's your crudy worth a tick? Each tick of movement, you got to know, right? What's how much is a tick of crude worth per 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 tick? Yeah, right. Ten dollars, correct. Yeah, so ten dollars per tick. Fill that in here. And overall move was approximately, and you know, obviously this is going to vary depending on your actual fills, where you actually got in and out, and you have to take commission out of this too. But roughly, you would make about a thousand dollars. Right, that's short right there on a two lot with a scalp and a runner would have made around a thousand dollars less commission. Now, a question for the team here tonight: Show of hands, how many of you would be done? This would be your one and done trade right there. Either you're at your goal or you're close to your goal. You know, you got into the trade about six, six, I don't know, 45-ish time-wise. So, you know, you're 15, what, you know, the crude pit open here at six. You know, you missed this trade here. You just weren't in there. You just didn't get it. You missed that. You missed this retrace. You got in over here, 648, just before seven, and you rode it all the way down here till about 705. So the whole trade was about 15 minutes. I'm seeing most of you saying, yes, I'm done. Got my goal, I'm finished. Four times my goal, I only want to make 250 a day. So that's all you got to do. So why am I asking that question? Why am I emphasizing a one and done on crude? Well, let me ask you this. In our last exercise where we walked forward from 705 into the future, looking at all these other short trades that set up, and most of you got them. You see them flashing, right? You see them. Yeah, less commission. Yeah, you take commission out of that, Mindy, of course. Yeah. So most of you were typing in S's as it was kissing the mid band here, and that was all correct. Each retrace up here, I'm not going to do them all, but I'm going to do a couple together. One, two, three, four, right? Five. That's a good one right there. Right there. So there's five. Eh, minimum criteria, six, right? Okay, six, uh, one down, you had one here, seven, eight, I'll just call this one, call it one, seven, let's call this collectively seven, and you had nine, well, and then it reversed, okay, so, yeah, seven, and what we showed here, between seven and eight thirty, you had seven more shorting opportunities, but the point I'm trying to make here is that you didn't need to take any more of these. All of these turned out to be good. These were scalps, scalp, break even, scalp, scalp. And then, of course, this, these two turned out to be beautiful runners. These two poppers right here and this little poppy off the midman right here. Now, are we still in the room? We were still in the room. I think we called that one. I think we called that one. I think I was done by here. I wasn't. I was. I was done. I'd caught... I think I caught a gold move, I caught the crude, and I got a couple of Russell trades in. So by quarter to eight, I was finished. That's why I wasn't hardly calling. I mean, I was observing the chart and helping you see trades, but I was finished. Yeah, exactly, Dennis. You want to reduce market exposure. Market exposure and trading equals risk. Risk equals the opportunity to make money, yes, if you're on the right side of the trade and you manage it properly and, and your entry is good in this case, in the direction of the trend short. Uh, and, of course, the other thing is that you're exposed to risk for loss. So while, you know, uh, uh, intuitively it might be hard to grasp the fact that when you say, I want to take the least amount of trades possible in the course of a morning, the least, not the most, the least. 
If you can hit your goal in one or two trades, that is the ideal condition. This is really what you want to do. All right, let's look at this last one here. Um, let's say you didn't get in any of these shorts, you know, here, here, here. You missed them all. And you just finally, you know, you catch this last run. You missed all everything up until 742, and you caught this one right here. And I don't know, you know, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you stopped out down here somewhere. So what was this one worth? Trail, trail, trail. You got your runner. Obviously, you can see that you got your scalp off at 10, no problem, when it hit that swing. You were filled short on the close of the bar out of an object trader box or a limit order right here, 76. And it went all the way down. Was that 55? Yeah, no. So what is that? 55, 76-ish filled. And you get out at uh, 10. 66 ticks. Uh, let's turn predictors on, uh, Robert. Yeah, I can turn predictors on if they, if you use them and they're helpful. Yeah, yeah. Now let, let me now that you're bringing that up. Let me just quickly show that. Um, I I I I'm not saying I don't use predictors. I don't use them as much as probably maybe some other trade traders use them. Um, sometimes I'll toggle them on and off. You know, sometimes I'll turn them on just kind of see where they're at, and then I'll turn them back off. Or sometimes I'll leave them on. But in this case here, what what you can make note of. In, in regards to predictors is that um, when a market's heading down, you can obviously see the, the predictors are heading down, right? When the market is retracing, the predictors are retracing. And oftentimes they'll help you see resistance levels and support levels, right? And it doesn't have to be the middle of the bubble where the dots are. It can touch the edge of the bubble, kiss and roll, touch the edge of the bubble in, in case of an uptrend and bounce, right? So in the case of sideways price action, you can very clearly see in here that as it was consolidating, you could make the case that you were sideways to down, so you're still shorting the top of resistance. That's your mode of entry. Primary mode of entry is still short through here, right? Kiss, roll, kiss, roll, kiss, roll, kiss, roll, all the way down, and you catch the last leg here, which was 66 ticks. So 10 tick uh, first lot, 66 tick. 760, 76, 760. This could have been, you know, you could have missed everything, all these trades, everything, all of this, all of it. The first one here, this one, all of it. These other ones, these three or four or five in here, you missed all that. You just caught that one right there. It's, it's 742. 66 tick runner, you're up 760 bucks. That could have been another one and done shot for you. So there wasn't only one one and done shot. There were several of them on crude today. Now, in this case, did you get an ABC shot at it? Yes. Where's the ABC shot on this trade entry? Anybody? Can you see it? What am I talking about when I say ABC entry? Anybody familiar with that terminology? ABC means that it will pull back or you know pull down or whatever very close to where the other entry was. Is there a secondary entry after this one on this short trade here? Yes or no? And do you see it? Another chance to get in. Was there another chance to get in short? If you miss this box, yes or no? You don't even have to say where it is. Do you see it, though? You want me to help you? Let me help you a little bit. What's flashing right in here? What is that? Yeah. Right, exactly. Minimum criteria. So that's your AVC. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does. It's really good if it does. That's another chance to take it. So here's your A. Here's your B. Right? And then you follow through. And down you go. C comes down. And there you go. So your entry was lower than the other entry, but you still got a nice drop. Okay? All right. Let's try to pop one more in here. Do you want to look at some of the long trades on gold? Or is there another instrument we want to see? Gold was really getting some beautiful runs up today. Um, I don't know if anybody caught any of them. But just gold was on fire. Here, let me, before I run out of time, we got about 10 minutes. Let's try to get a gold chart up real quick here. 
and I can show periods of when it ran. And I can al also contrast that with periods where it went sideways and how to quickly be able to see that. Because that's, that's what we hear all the time. You know, traders all the time we hear, you know, well, you know, it's an armchair quarterback, Charles, and come in here and, you know, you see what happened, when it's happened, what bars in real time, you can't tell, you know, is it trending? How do I know it's range bound? How do I know? I never can seem to tell, you know, but when I see it after the fact, I see all those trades. You want to do one? You want to do it together? Okay, let's do some together. Let's do some together. And we won't necessarily call out trades, but we'll we'll call out. Um, let's do this. I'm going to recreate uh, gold from this morning in a similar real time manner that I did with uh, uh, crude oil. And when you think that gold is going sideways, you would type in S. And when you think it's going up in an uptrend, you would type in a U. And I'll advance it. And I'll just advance it in real time. So when you th so up obviously would be long trades. We don't have to look for those. We know the pullbacks to support is long, right? However, there are periods where gold will consolidate, right? Not to confuse it with short trades, let's just type in a C. C for consolidation, U for up. C for consolidation, U for up. Is everybody ready to look at gold? Reconstructing gold. And if you feel like doing so, the third letter we can use in this exercise, this might be the last one we do this, more, uh, this evening, is um, if you see a long tri uh, trade set up, type in the letter L. Reconstructing gold and from real time. Just to be clear, if you believe that you are in an uptrend, you would type a U. If you believe you're seeing an uptrend. C indicates that you feel that gold is consolidating. 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 Help me out here. <laughs> is that an O or an I? And when you think you see a long trade, you would simply type in the letter L. Long trade setup call. Oh, you're not on the gold chart yet? Here. There we go. Everybody ready? Okay, we're going to start right here. This is where the live room was opened at 5.55 a.m. Pacific on, uh, on uh, uh, gold. And this is the exercise. U for uptrend, C consolidation, L for long trade setups. I was on pause. I was on pause. Everybody seeing the gold chart? Gold chart, GC, uh, August contract, cursor moving around the letters. Is everybody ready to reconstruct real time on gold? Everybody clear what the exercise is doing? Reconstructing real time on GC. Ready to go? Here we go. All right, this area right here that you are seeing is 645. We will begin the exercise right here going forward. And here we go. 653. There's 7 o'clock. 709. Remember, when you see the following, you type in the corresponding letter. 718. There's 721. Room, slide room still open. 723 on gold. Still in the live room. 727. There's 730. 739, uh, 740, 746. These are the letters when you observe something on gold. 754 coming up on 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, yeah, there was 8 o'clock right there. That's 8 o'clock right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
804. I'm just getting ready to close the live room. So you're on your own now. 811. 824. Room's been closed about 20 minutes. You're on your own. That's why this exercise is important. See how you toggle back and forth and you visualize what happened? This helps your mind figure out what to do when you see it in real time. Going on a tear. There's 9 o'clock. You're observing the price action on GC Gold Futures. Okay, now we're coming up on 9.30. 9.57, there's 10 a.m. right there. Continuing forward, 10 o'clock. Exercise is almost over. We'll take it into the close. There's 11 a.m. Pacific, 11.05. Eleven eleven, eleven fifteen. Okay, there's a lot coming up on eleven thirty AM Pacific. Right here. Eleven twenty nine, right there. See it? Right there. Did you see it? Okay. Continuing on. Got about an hour and a half left in the market today on gold. Okay, there's coming up on 12 o'clock. There's 11.54. Almost done. Here's uh, one hour left in the trading session on gold. And we're coming into the close. What are you seeing? Type in what you see. U, C, or L. I'm trying to help you out there. And half an hour left. 12 o'clock. Right here. Yeah, so 12 to 12.30 was right here. Yeah, 12 was right here. 12.15 was right there. 12.30 was right there. And then there's the close right there. All right. Good. How did you do? A lot of mid-band trades on gold, says Robert K. How did you do? Looking back on it, let me put it all in front of you right here now. There it is all together. How did you do when you watched it come at you in real time? Were you able to see what to do? Okay, let me show you where we started and where we ended. Okay, let's look at the whole thing all together now. You started looking at it right here. Okay. Okay. So each time she pulled back here, well, first of all, as the excuse me price action began to ascend, clearly you would have typed in a U throughout here. Yeah, it doesn't always go like this. Gold doesn't have a tear like this all the time. Okay, it just it doesn't tear like this all the time. So this was this was an unusual day for gold, no question about it. Same with crude. Crude was probably 300 tick day, and that that's you know you get 100 tick, 150, 200 tick days are not unusual on crude, but today was an exceptional day, no question about it. Um, each one of these pullbacks where she came with yellow bars and came and sat on the mid band would have been L's for you. Many you many of you typed in L's. I saw them coming in. I'll just show a few of them. I'm not going to show all of them. Uh, this was a deep retracement here. This was all long trade here, right? Each one of these, all these were pullbacks. Now, one thing I did want to see, some of you typed it in, was a C here for consolidation. Many of you caught the long trade here. And there would have been another C for consolidation right here. So the way you can tell that is, and, and this is just a quick you know, sort of way to do this, is when it goes into these areas, and it's clearly still in an uptrend, like here and here, you can just do what we did earlier at the open. We can just put those support resistance lines in there real quick to reinforce the fact that we're seeing that she's going sideways. Now, the way you trade it is still pulling back, so you're buying support. That's like we did on the equities this morning. Remember the equities? Remember, remember Russell? Remember ES? Remember YM? They were all like this in big 30, 35, 25 tick ranges, but they were sideways to up. So each of these little kisses of support were actually long scalp trades. That's how you trade that, right? 
you're buying support. It comes down, bounces, take your coin at the top. Buys it, and then eventually what happens is, just like crude did to the downside, right? She continues up like that. Breaks out of the range, continuing the upward motion, uh, 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 trend direction to the upside. You got that 100%, Jim? You saw all those? Michael, you got them? Everybody? Good. So, you know, that's the things when, when you're continuing to trade an instrument that you would look for, right? Are you in an uptrend? Clearly we are. Where am I looking to get long on the pullbacks? Minimum criteria. Of course, I could have helped you out and turn those on. I should have done that probably. Real-time alerts. Long, you're in an uptrend, so we're looking for long minimum criteria, long mid-band, and long phantoms. You can see the phantoms flashing here. You can see the mid-bands are flashing here. And the minimum criteria are flashing up here. Those are all your real-time alerts. Of course, that would have helped you see this. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, I, it's really, it, 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 as you spend more, there's no substitute for chart time. I mean, I don't know what words to say, but the more, you know, and be getting a familiarity with one or two instruments, I wouldn't do more than one or two, three at the most, where you get really familiar with how it moves. Okay. I trade the Russell a lot. I, I can tell when Russell's being squirrely and I can tell when Russell's trending pretty quickly. You know, in real time. Same with crude. Gary's really good at crude, obviously. And we like gold. In the case of the uptrend, uh, Jim B., yes, in this uptrend here, each one of these retracements into support, uh, the OT region boxes that I've drawn them here, would be buy opportunities or longs. Yes, there's no shorts in here. Even though, you <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> let me take a sip of tea. <clears throat> Hold on one second, please. Even though you got a transitional background um, here and you got red bars that were below the mid-band, th this was not a trend change. If it was a bona fide trend change, it would have come up, kissed the mid-band, put in a lower high and a lower low, and then broken down something like that. You know, then you would have gotten a red background, stair-stepping down like we saw in crude, and then you're shorting rollovers. But that's not what we got. We did not get this. We got quite the opposite trend continuation to the upside. Well, the green background, the higher highs, the higher lows, the stair-stepping of the mid-band and all the bands, the primary blue bars, there's, it's not just one thing. The green background is a visual aid that helps see that you're in an uptrend, right? Um, the blue bars help. The stair-stepping of the bands help. These are all sort of components, tools, if you will, of the long entry decision process to get in and get long, take long trades. So you're in, in no case between here and here did you ever take a short. Now the reason for that, and when you got a very strong, powerful uptrend where a continuation like this here, is that in the case where, you know, let's say hypothetically you did a mid-band box, say something like this, and you enable to short. So here, here you know, next thing you know, this thing closes out to the downside, finds support down there right around line two, bounces up in your face, and then rips and takes off. This is not a shorting opportunity. This is simply a deep retracement to get long under the mid-band. You can move them to get a better entry, Jim. Yes. So let's say in our hypothetical here, let's blow this up and and do, and then we're going to wrap. In the case here of a mid-band box, let's say that you did not get filled long uh on this this uh this this uh, uh box on on gold right here you know i don't know where you boxed it um i don't know let's say you boxed it in here somewhere and it never broke up you never got filled so if your question is could you take this box and reconstruct another box down here and go ahead and take the long the answer is yes obviously yes you reposition the box at the lower level but this is not a short yeah so green background, stair-stepping price action, bands, blue bars, all these are components of the decision-making process of, first of all, you know you're taking longs only, right, in the uptrend, just like we were short and crude on in the downtrend. The downtrend were kiss and roll resistance shorting, right? Here's the opposite. This is a big, huge run on gold. We're getting long, longs only. 
So this never happened. This hypothetical over here did not happen. Okay. All right. I think that's a wrap. Let me go ahead and stop the recorder. I appreciate everybody sticking around here. We want to